Um, hi, Leo. Inhale, arms straight. Exhale, plank. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Next inhale, walk or jump. Exhale, fold. Inhale, up. Hands touch. Samastatihi. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, straight arms. Exhale, plank. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Scoot the hands back toward the feet. Wide fingers. Nice ujjayi. On the next inhale, walk or jump. Exhale, fold. Inhale, up. Strong Mula Bandha, Samastatihi. Inhale, hands up. Strong Mula Bandha. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, straight arms. Exhale, plank. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Next inhale, walk or jump. Exhale, fold. Inhale, up. Samastatihi. Bending the knees. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, arms straight. Exhale, plank. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Right foot. Inhale up, warrior one. Exhale down. Inhale up, dog. Exhale down, dog. Left foot, inhale up, warrior one. Exhale down. Inhale up, dog. Exhale down, dog. Chin tucks under, drishti is the belly button. Listen to the breath. Next inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, up. Samastatihi. Inhale, knees bend. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, straight arms. Exhale, plank. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right foot. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Left foot. Inhale, up. 
Exhale down. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Strong quadriceps. Listen closely to your breath. Nice and hollow. Next inhale, exhale, fold, inhale, up, samastati, inhale, knees bend, exhale, hands forward, inhale, arms straight, exhale, plank, inhale, up dog, Exhale, down dog. Right foot, inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Left foot, inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale, up dog, strong Mula Bandha, hollow breath, steady Drishti. On an inhale, walk or jump. Exhale, fold. Inhale, knees bend. Samastatihi. It's an inhale, open the feet, grab the toes, Parangustasana. Exhale, elbows bend. Drishti is somewhere toward the ceiling or maybe your belly button. So an exhale, hands under the feet. Inhale, arms straight. Exhale, elbows bend. Padahastasana. Strong Mula Bandha, steady Drishti. With your own inhale, arms straighten. Exhale, hands to hips. Inhale, come up. Exhale, samastatihi. Inhale, open for triangle. Exhale, down. Hang on to anything you want. Traditionally, first two fingers take that big toe. Uttita Trikonasana. And remember how we were talking about that right crease where the leg comes out of the torso, that hip goes back toward the wall behind you. It's an inhale to rise. Exhale, second side. Beautiful, beautiful. Strong Mulda Bandha, that crease pulls back. It's 
and inhale to rise and rotate. Exhale down. Left hand toward the right foot, Parigrita Trikanasana. And the crease on the right hip pulls back. And exhale when you look down. Inhale, travel up. Exhale, side two. Arms stack straight up on top of each other. And exhale to look at the bottom hand. Inhale, come up. Samastati. It's an inhale, open, extended side angle. Exhale down, either elbow to the knee or hand to the floor. Inhale to rise, exhale side two. Beautiful. Inhale to rise, Paravritta Parsvokanasana, rotated extended side angle. Left hand somewhere toward the right leg. The base of the posture is just like warrior. So inhale up, exhale, second side. Mola Banda. and inhale up. Samastatiye, nice. Hands are on the hips. Inhale, open. Exhale, down. Inhale, arms straight. Exhale, elbows bend. Prasarita, Parottanasana A. Strong Mulabandha, strong quadriceps, steady drishti, hollow breath. Next inhale, arms go straight. Exhale, hands to hips. Inhale, come up. Exhale, look forward. Inhale, open. Exhale, hands to hips. Inhale, look up. Exhale, fold. Prasarita Parottanasana. A, B, C, D. <coughs>
Sit, inhale, up, look up. Exhale, look forward. Inhale, arms open. Exhale, hands interlace. Inhale, look up. Exhale, fold. And inhale up, hands move to the hips, exhale, look forward, inhale, hands stay, exhale, first two fingers, take the big toes, inhale, arch your back, straighten the arms, exhale, elbows bend. Nice breath. and inhale, arms straighten, beautiful. Exhale, hands to hips. Inhale, come up, samastatihi. So inhale, open, hands up the back in prayer. Exhale, head to the right leg. It takes you a couple breaths to get in. Ooh, good pop. Wait for an exhale to descend. Inhale up, exhale second side. Parsvottanasana. and inhale up and open. That's it for standing. Samastati. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, straight arms. Exhale, plank. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, through jump. Sit down. Dandasana, feet are flexed, hands are on the floor, chin is lifted, I mean chin is tucked, chest is lifted. Mula Bandha is always helping. And exhale, first two fingers take the big toes. Inhale, arch. Exhale, fold. Paschimottanasana A. On an exhale, switch your hand hold, sides of feet, thumb is on the front of the foot, inhale, arch, exhale, fold, Paschimottanasana B. Strong quadriceps, strong Mula Bandha. On an exhale, reach out around your feet, interlace your hands. Inhale, arch. Exhale, fold. Paschimottanasana C.
On an exhale, you climb your hands over the tops of your toes and reach down and grab your feet. It's a little bit funky because I wish my toes went all the way to my elbows. Mm. Inhale, arch. Exhale, fold. Paschimottanasana D. So inhale, arch, exhale, release. When we got to D, some of you were like, is there one for every single letter of the alphabet? Is that all we're gonna do today? No, we're only going to D. Go ahead, take your vinyasa through jump, tabletop or purvo tanasana. And exhale down, inhale, lift up, exhale, jump back. Nice little vinyasa through jump. Seated half bound lotus, right foot first, Ardha Bhada Padma Paschimottanasana. Nice, Amelia. You got it, you got it, Maya. Mula Bandha, stay strong, whatever you're hanging on to. Inhale, arch, pull against it. Exhale, release. Optional vinyasa in between sides. Left foot seated half bound lotus. Strong right quadricep. An inhale to arch. Exhale, release. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, jump back. Right knee folds. Trianga Mukha Ekapada Paschimottanasana. If it seems like a lot, hang back. If it seems like too much, put your leg out to the side. It seems easy, you're already folded down. Strong quadricep on that left leg. When I strengthen up my quadricep, it barely lifts me up out of the posture, but it really accentuates what's going on down in the pelvis. Inhale, arch, and the sacrum. Exhale up. And if my quadricep is active, Mola Bandha's on for sure. Right foot and against the left thigh, Janu Shrasasana A. When I first started learning Ashtanga, I was like, oh, I'm going to get that posture. Oh, what? wait, what's that posture? Okay, I'm getting it. Okay, what about this posture? And I was learning all of the postures. And then I was practicing Mulabandha and my breath, but I was really kind of focused on learning the postures. And after about 400 years, go ahead, inhale, arch, exhale, release. Vinyasa, or trade sides.
Actually, near the beginning, left foot in against the right thigh, Janusrasasana A. Near the beginning, Beryl told me that eventually, if she woke me up out of a dead sleep at like four in the morning, I would be able to just pop up and do it. And I would know the order and I would know the breath. And when she first told me that, I remember thinking, there is no possible way. And then after repetition, 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 I got it down. After five breaths, inhale, arch. And once I got the sequence down, then I was like, oh, this isn't even an asana practice. The asana is just like the template. It's really a pranayama practice. Through jump, sit up onto the right heel. So whatever the focus is in your practice, I feel like it changes as time goes on. Because later I was like, oh, this isn't even a pranayama practice. This is like, I'm just making energetic patterns and making sure that they're lit up. And then I was like, oh, awesome. I'm practicing enough yoga, I'm getting really nuts. That's good. Not that that's good for you. That was just a personal opinion of a conversation with myself. Inhale, arch. Vinyasa or trade sides, Janushasana B. Sit down onto the left heel. And listen to the breath. Strong right quadricep. And inhale, arch, exhale, release. Inhale, lift up, exhale, jump back. Inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. John Ushasasana C. Right foot, ball of the foot on the floor. The heel presses in against the left femur. If the knee is high, stay up. If the knee is low, you can fold forward. Amelia, you're perfect. I can see you, I love you. Nice, Bill. I can see you. Mulabunda's like, I don't wanna show up for modifications. And I'm like, just come on. Take your vinyasa if you want to, or trade sides. Left foot, ball of the foot on the floor. Heel presses in against that right femur. The right quad is active. So an inhale to arch, exhale, release. Left foot tucked or half lotus, right knee. Oh, no, 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 that's not true. I was thinking ahead, I'm sorry. Right knee up, <laughs> Mary Chasana A. Left leg is extended.
On an inhale, open the shoulder against the shin. Exhale, release. Vinyasa or trade sides. Left knee up, right leg extended. Mary Chasana A, side two. an inhale arch exhale release left foot folds or half lotus right knee up this is what I was thinking ahead to Mary Chasen and B And inhale, arch, exhale, release. Right foot half lotus or right foot tucked. And inhale up, exhale, release. Here's coming some twists, all right in a row. Left leg extended, right knee up, Marichasana C. Nice, Sayuri. Nice, Danielle. After five, it's an inhale, look forward, exhale, release. Left knee up, right foot extended, twist across. And just like in triangle where we were talking about that crease in the leg, that crease is trying to go down and behind you a little bit. Inhale, look forward, exhale, release. Mary Chiasana D, left foot half lotus or left foot tucked, right knee up, twist across. Hi, Isaac.
out and inhale, look forward, exhale, release. Right foot half lotus or right foot tucks. Left knee up. So if you feel like, I mean, sorry to bring it up in this posture, but if you feel like you're doing exactly the same thing and you're not getting closer to the posture, sometimes do something different. So if I lay on my back, I actually can squeeze in. I don't get as much of a twist, but I get a little bit of a twist and I can squeeze in more deeply than when my weight is going down into my pelvis. So feel free to mix. If you're making a modification, make 10. You know, 10 different practices, 10 different modifications. It's an inhale, look forward, exhale, release. We don't have to do boat. Yay! <laughs> Jump forward. You might want to put something under your heels and keep your knees together and twist across for Pashasana. Or you might want to only bind. You can open your feet and instead of, instead of turning right and binding both knees, you could bind your left knee and look over your right shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I learned Pashasana, we would twist right first. This is another posture where there's, you know, people twist right, people twist left. I don't think it matters because now, inhale, look forward. Switch sides. So either you're starting to work around both shins, both knees, or you're binding around your right leg looking over your left shoulder. And inhale, look forward, exhale out, plank, up dog, down dog, left knee folds, just like trianga, choice one, left knee folds, do trianga, choice two, right leg lifts up, hang open for five, choice three, left foot is flexed out in front. It's an exhale, head to the leg. And if it's really easy, you can use that primary series handhold up on top of that foot. Mula Bandha is still being helpful. Crown Chasana. and inhale, arch, look at your foot, exhale, release. Right knee folds, left leg lifts up, or do trianga, or right foot is extended and flexed, left leg lifts up. Crown Chasana A, And exhale, head to the leg, crown chest in a B. Uh 
On an inhale, arch, go back to A, and then exhale, take your vinyasa. If you had a bent knee, the long leg just slides under the bent knee for the vinyasa. Nice. From down dog, lie down onto your belly, Shalabhasana A. Feet are up, forehead is up. Fingers are wide, palms face up. And with the forehead staying high, the drishti is down toward the floor. Oh yeah, Mula Bandha. When you're ready, pull your hands forward, flip over your fingertips, press back into your palms. Shalabhasana B. Old school, elbows are straight. So either way. Head stays high, hands move. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Beautiful, lie down onto your belly. You can grab up one foot at a time. It's pointed, the foot is pointed and the hands kind of turn around so the fingers cradle the toes and your shoulder moves around, your elbow is up toward the ceiling. And you can do one at a time or you can do both feet and stay up a little bit longer. Strong Mula Bandha. Switch sides. If you've already been in full Bekasana or full frog for five breaths, you can come out or stay in. Bekasana or Arda Bekasana. Feet release, head stays up. It's an inhale, move into up dog. Exhale, move into down dog. Lie down onto the belly again. Find Mula Bandha, find your breath, full bow. Lift whenever you're ready. If it's super easy, knees are together. Don't really go for that in a big way unless you know you love it. Feet can be apart, that's totally fine. Maybe the toes touch, maybe the inside line of the feet touch. When I learned it, I learned it flexed feet. Most people do it with pointed toes or pointed feet, open toes. It's an inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Lie down onto the belly. So if, if you've done this before, you know your favorite way to roll over. Pull up into bow, roll to your right shoulder. The head stays aligned like you're in regular bow. And with the chin not moving at all, the eyeballs look up to the ceiling, side drishti. Parsvadhanurasana, side bow, parsvadrishti, side drishti. It's an inhale up, exhale over, second side. Open that rib cage up against the floor. Let gravity take the top knee a little closer to the bottom knee. Chin stays in regular alignment. Eyeballs look up at the ceiling. and inhale up, five more, full bow. Breaths, not postures.
and release. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Down dog is just hold this one for a couple seconds. Down dog is what we do instead of child's pose. So you really want to make sure that you get your chin tucked under on that vinyasa and you kind of hump up your back. It'll spread it out. And also you're always welcome to do child's pose instead of vinyasa. Come down onto your knees, shins. You can have your toes tucked under so the heels are higher or you can have your feet flat. Tailbone tucks between the femurs. Chest is high, head hangs off the back. Drishti is past the nose to the ceiling. Ustrasana, camel posture. Lean back, fling yourself up using your leg strength. Find plank, up dog, down dog. Come over onto your knees or shins. Choice one, child's pose. Choice, no, choice one, do whatever you want. Choice two, child's pose. Choice three, camel. Choice four, Lagu Vajrasana, little thunderbolt. Your hands hang on somewhere on your legs. I don't think it matters where. New school is near the ankles. Old school used to be around the front of the kneecaps. Head goes down to the floor. And inhale up. Beautiful. Back onto the knees. Choice one, do whatever you want. Choice two, do whatever you want. Choice 88, do whatever you want. Choice 108. Arms go back, they go over the top, they reach for the floor, they actually catch the ankles and you tuck your head in between your feet. Kapotasana. This is a good spot if you have a yoga wheel to take time to use it. There's Kapotasana A and B. You're welcome to do B and A. One is arms are over, you're working in toward the toes, elbows and forearms are on the floor. And then the other one is arms are straight. So the front body looks like full back bend and the bottom part of the body is still on the shins. Nice, nice, <laughs> beautiful. Come up whenever you're finished. Find your vinyasa. Jenny, it's good that you're in with your mom. You can sit on her lap. The next one is uh, Lagu Vajrasana. Uh, no, that's not true. The next one is Supta Vajrasana, reclining thunderbolt. So you can put your knees under a couch. Maybe they're in lotus. Maybe you have someone that can um, sit their butt on the floor in front of you and put their legs over your legs. Cross behind, grab the toes, and to exhale back to the top of the head. I don't have anything going on, so I'm going to release my legs and do the little bit of back bend. It's five breaths down. And then it's up and down five times. The throat stays open toward the ceiling. So that head 
hanging off the back position stays throughout the whole posture. Five up and down, and then five more breaths down. Up on an inhale, exhale, plank. Inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. Okay, so you know the first 100 choices are do whatever you want. The posture is crane. You're welcome to do crow. I would move back to the center of the yoga mat so that if you roll over in a somersault, you land on this small amount of padding that we have. Wide fingers, straight arms, knees up onto the arms, my arms don't really love to be straight. Five breaths. You can shoot back to plank or you can go up into handstand, lower back down into crane. The second crane jump into. That's really only good advice if you know that you love doing it. <laughs> Yesterday in the handstand workshop, we were talking about figuring out how to fall and either do it in deep, like figure it out in deep snow or shallow water, some super soft uphill landing. and exhale plank inhale up dog exhale down dog left knee folds like trianga so your left foot is next to its own hip right foot half lotus or you can kind of tuck it in under that thigh your left hand has a platter of, um, it's an assortment, pancakes, waffles, homemade whipped cream, fruit, and you accidentally throw it under your knee. And that's your right knee. It's your left hand you're trying to serve with, and then you serve the floor. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. If that foot is in half lotus, your right hand grabs around the back and maybe touches the toe, hang on to it. If it's super easy, you can climb down and grab onto your shin. Hi, Sparkles. And you push off that bottom hand. Drishti is at eye level as far as you can take it. Mulabandha is always trying to help. It's an inhale, look forward. Exhale, release. Take a vinyasa or trade sides. The right foot is next to its own hip like trianga. The left foot is either kind of tucked in, uh, maybe like P American pigeon, I don't know, or half lotus. Now your right hand is serving. You went back for another tray. And it tips down and falls onto the floor. That right hand is under your left knee. Beautiful. Left hand reaches around the back. Drishti is at eye level. The chin, there's a tendency to want to um, overarch the neck in this posture. So the chin is kind of tucked in toward the shoulder and you look over that left shoulder. The way to get the shoulder up further is to push off of your right hand, maybe even pull with your left hand. Lagu Vajrasana, no, no, 
that's the only thing I can say today. Inhale, look forward. That was um, Vajasana. Uh, something Vajasana. Baharad Vajasana. Through jump. Ardha Matsyandrasana. This time, the left foot is next to the right hip. You know when you do Gomukhasana with your butt on the floor? That's a place that you could start from and then take your top foot and set it down flat. You want the front kneecap and the front ankle to be lined up. So my foot, my right foot is actually forward of my knee. And then twist across. Give yourself a little pull. Your back hand can be super close to your sacrum to accentuate the twist. Or you can come around and tuck that knee under your left shoulder, reach for the foot. Back hand goes around to the thigh. It's called Ardha Matsyandrasana, half Lord of the Fishes. Congratulations. Oh, it's Maureen. Nice job, Maureen. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, release. Second side. The right foot is next to the left hip. And if you were doing an Iyengar style Gomukhasana, your left knee would be on top. Pull it out until that foot can be flat on the floor. The ankle lines up with the knee. The toes are off the front. The ball of the foot is off of the front. Twist around. I feel like I get a really good twist if I get my elbow to the outside of my knee and then I shove that arm forward. But of course, that feels very spacious, so it's probably not Ashtanga. I'm just giving Ashtanga a hard time. So you lean forward, get your body out of the way. Get that knee tucked under your arm. My left hip is trying to crawl up into my ear. There. Ardha Matsyandrasana. And inhale, look forward, exhale, release. Nice vinyasa. We're gonna do one more posture of this part, and then uh, let me look at the time. Yeah, we'll do one more posture, and then we'll go into back bends and closing or whatever. So the next posture is one leg behind the head. Eka Pada Shirsasana. It's the right foot. You kind of tuck it behind the head. A nice modification is touch your foot to your head or hold it in front of you and look at it. Just start to let that hip open. Make sure everything is still active and comfortable, especially the left quadricep. and then fold forward. If your leg is behind your head, your forehead is on your shin. If your leg is in front of your head, the side of your foot is on your shin, below your knee. And then five breaths lifted. See if you can twirl that calf up towards your shoulder. And nice, nice, nice. And then you can either take a vinyasa or switch sides. So now, nice, Danielle. Right foot is extended. Left leg behind the head, Ekapada Shirsasana. Either it's getting behind the head or it's trying to touch the head or it's in front of you 
and you can look at it or past it. And exhale down. Mula Bandha has been on a long time and it's still helpful. And then up and lifted. Maybe take a vinyasa from there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Danielle, Danielle, Danielle. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Almost. So right when you moved your hands, instead of moving your hands, uh, that foot that is not toward the yoga wheel, yeah, that one, yeah, that, that it's gonna be called, let's just call it the left foot. Okay, your other foot is gonna go back, but it's gonna come and try to kick me. Try to touch me with your left foot, yeah, and it'll let your other leg get back into plank. Oh, and then it steps back. Oh, yes. The hairdo paid off. Don't you love it when I say hairdo? Isn't that something people from the 1950s said? Hairdo. It's really like a hairstyle. Um, okay, so you can unmute if you, have, if you have anything to talk about. Or you can go on into any postures you want, including full back bend or the headstands from second series, or the forearm stand from second series, or anything at all, or closing sequence. And if you have any questions, just unmute and uh, talk to me. That was some nice back bending yoga. Maya, is that the first time you ever did part of second? I would say so, if the postures I was just doing were the ones you were talking about. Yeah, yes. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Wasn't. maybe I did it once before, maybe. Oh, good. That's good. So you already have those energetic patterns like blooming. I'm getting there. Good, good. Nice, Gina. Nice scorpion. If your hair were sticking up, you could comb it with your toes. Really? Easy, like your hair is so long, that would have been an easy reach. Nice, Isaac. Titibhasana. I like that, Maria. I have to throw my top leg over in forearm stand. Like my shoulders are so, they're such breaks. Yeah. Nice, Kirsten. Maureen, Maureen, Maureen. Maureen, I hope your friend is good in New York City. Good. Amelia, 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 I met you and I was like, oh, you're the only Amelia that I know and I love your name and I love everything about you. And then there's this young girl that works at City Market, the health food store I go to, and 
she told me her name was Amelia. And I was like, that's going to be really easy to remember now. <laughs> Cause I was like, Oh, I have a good Amelia in my life already. She's very young. She's very sweet. Headstand, handstands, forearm stands. Isaac's finishing second. So primary series, we usually, for I have no idea why, but we call it primary series most of the time. It's, I learned it as first series. And then second series, we usually call it second series. So just because of the way we use language, language we usually say first primary series, second series. But really, it would be more consistent. Oh, good dog. It would be more consistent to say primary series, intermediate series, or first series, second series. Or you could say, but most people might not know what you're talking about, yoga chikitsa, nadi shodhana. Yoga chikitsa means yoga therapy. So first series is considered yoga therapy. And then nadi shodhana is a Shodhana is a type of cleansing, and nadis are the energetic channels that run through the body, and they're of every size. If you think about the sizes of like your arteries all the way down to the capillaries, the nadis are an energetic uh, tube system of the same sort of thing. And so nadi shodhana cleans them out and also, they can become bigger around so that you can pack more energy into your body. So if someone ever looks at you and they say, oh my gosh, you have big naughties, you're like, I am so blessed. No one's going to say that. <laughs> I love you. Bye, Cammie. <laughs> Thank you. You can continue on finishing through back bends, through closing sequence. Therapy. You have so much therapy. Not very big knotties. <laughs>
You are serious. Are you even serious? What level are you on? Look, we have to be friends. Do you know how to write yet? Because I have to give you my Pokemon number. I'll send you gifts. So much for backbend, man. Sayuri, are you ready? So you go, do you know how to work it? Uh, kind of. Okay, so click, okay, in the bottom corner, there's a picture of your head. Yep. Click that. Yep. And then go up top of the screen, there's gonna be a picture of you and your pet. Go up top and hit friends. Yep. And then it's, and then, uh, in the middle of the top three green things, it says add friend. Okay. Okay. And okay. my number that you want to type in is 4137. Another one's in it, and I need it. 5736. 5736. 1172. Okay. Sending. Yes. <laughs> How many friends do you guys have? What level are you on? Is this Buddy's account or your own? This is Sumi's. Sumi has her own account? <laughs> Just for this. <laughs> oh my gosh, she is thrilling me. You have no idea. Right now I have one, two, three, I have five gifts to open. Ooh. It'll come in in a second. Yeah, let me get you a charger. Okay, so so can Todd when I play him? Yeah. And I'm feeling You guys, I found someone to play Pokemon with. <laughs> okay, so the last three finishing postures. Hey Sayuri. Yeah. What level is she on? Uh, okay, I oh. found this on the- No, no, not you, Siri. 30. Oh, she's good. Yeah, that's gonna be great. Okay, so the last three finishing postures are bound lotus, seated lotus, and lifted lotus if you want it. No hurry, nice, nice, Gina. Nice Uttana Parasana. Nice Janu Shrasasana B, Maureen. Hi, Eddie. I don't really even know if you're Eddie or Frankie, but you're cute. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Hey, guess what? What? Tamiko and Ginny have their own Pokemon account, and we just traded the Pokemon number. <gasps> That's fun. So we're going to be friends. Oh, I thought my headphones were on, but they're not. Sarah, guess what else? What? Lissio showed up this morning. No way! Yeah, he, he's going to come tomorrow for primary series. I think Sunday primary series works for him. 
That's amazing. And we did, I don't know if you knew what the plan was, but we did um, three A's, three B's, standing to hands up the back, and then we did half of primary through Mary Chasana D, and then we got into second series through the, let one leg behind the head. So fun. Yeah. I kind of thought it was vinyasa, but I forgot that it was yeah. second. Well, it was... But... I mean, I titled Vinyasa for February so that we can work on whatever we want to. Oh, yeah. It was really nice work, so we might do the same thing next week. I love doing that. For a while on whatever day that was, Wednesday we were doing, we were doing like primary and then second. Like primary up through Mary Chiasana and then second. Is that what you just said? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's what we were doing for a while. It's nice. I love it. I love it because you get the twists and then you get the leg behind the head. Yeah, well, I love the twists. <laughs> For the practice, not necessarily the leg behind the head. Right. I mean, I love all of it. I just don't care if I do it. Ooh, Bill, you look great. That's nice. Oh, nice, Gina. I'm serious. I'm being serious. Look, Sayuri has her back cane. <laughs> Amelia has her dog taking over her entire yoga mat. Gina has her ice pack. Danielle has her favorite quilt. I don't know if it's her favorite. It's probably her favorite right now. And Maureen's still in down dog taking a vinyasa. <laughs> <laughs> Maureen's getting in. Mary Chasana A. Come on, Marcel. When you log in on your phone, you can't see everybody. It's so sad. Like, oh. I can just, I know. So thanks for the tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really nice practice, Kat. I mean, for me, I really liked that. Yeah, me too. Like the best of first and the best of second, in my yeah. opinion. And sometimes we would do the first half, the first part of second first, and then do primary afterwards. But usually we did it the way we did it today. <laughs> Second up to like uh, Kapatasana, that kind of thing, or you'd go all the way through Ekapada. Um, yeah, go as far, go wherever, go through forearm stand, and oh. then and then move into after forearm stand because you have that scorpion and forearm stand, yeah. and then Dandasana, Pashimottanasana. Oh, that I can see where that would be nice. Yeah, yeah. it's kind yeah. of all pretty nice, yeah. right? All those nice city, seating post, seated postures after the effort of second. Have, and all the back bends from second probably feels really good. Yeah. I turned my yoga mat around at the end there. So it's against the wall. And I did a back bend with my toes against the wall. And my, like you guys know how my back bend is. And my knees were pressing against the wall. And wow. it felt good. I mean, I think really your knees are supposed to be up, not hanging over your toes. But, you know. That's how mine is. So anyway, it felt great. It was a good. It was like a good assist. Mm. Does anyone need to run to the bathroom or get a cup of tea or anything? Do you need to, Pat? Go ahead. I'm okay. Bill needs a quilt. <laughs> hmm. Okay, does anyone have any topic that you particularly want to talk about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get it, Ginny, get it. I just, Ginny, look up here. I just caught a quill fish. I would like to just acknowledge the loss of our precious little Yoga Vermont mascot, Jackson. Thanks. Yeah, that's a little rough. Jackson um, died on Thursday. But what I, so I've just been crying. But um, thanks, Gina. Yeah, he was 
He's I mean, perfect. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's talk about yoga. <laughs> I hope you guys are all okay because I know that you love him. Oh, is that your dog, Kathy? Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Thanks. Thanks. You I know, know my first my first dog that I had that was a dachshund beauty. She it was her seven year anniversary. And oh my gosh, I remember bawling like a baby for like a couple months about it. And I just can't believe it. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's been seven years. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. I wish I could give you a hug. You know this second is okay. When we all tune off, it won't be okay. Yeah. This second, I'm okay. You know what's kind of Barely. I know this isn't what you wanted to spend time on, but you know, you've spent, uh, we've sort of, laughed about how all summer every time you opened a book it would say don't talk don't talk and take a bow of silence and all of that and I, I sometimes think about because I've had dogs as I know many of you have for for a long time and of course dogs don't talk and when we lose them they can see that they leave is so big it's such a big void and even a little dog that doesn't take up much room but there's something about their they, they don't talk and somehow that's makes them, it does make them more powerful, you know, that it, it makes their the lack of their presence more unwelcome or more sad. Whereas if you have somebody who's just freaking chatting all the time, you're glad to see them go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Maureen, are you okay? My power just went out, but oh, okay. 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 But Jackson. Okay. I just, I just wanted to make sure you were okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, okay, can I tell you what I've been thinking about? Or even I was writing about it a little bit. Yeah. Um, the list of the Niyamas, Saucha, Santosha, Svadhyaya, Tapas, and Ishvara Pranidhana. Saucha is cleanliness. Santosha is contentment. I'll slow down. Saucha is purity or cleanliness. Santosha, and it doesn't matter how you spell any of these. And Santosha is contentment. And Svadhyaya, S-V-A-D. Y A Y A. Svadhyaya is self study or study of scripture. Well, that's the first time I've heard of a study of scripture. I've only heard of it. Well, it used to only be translated as study of scripture because, you know, books were much rarer, obviously, than now. I have a whole library behind me. Um, which I love, but it used to be that people would identify with a character in the book, generally the main good guy, and the way the, the, way the main character handles life is a study of how we should possibly handle life. So study of scripture, scripture is always trying to be uplifting and give good advice and, you know, help us live our lives and that kind of thing. Yeah. So, but it's like holding up a mirror to the self in some ways, it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. So self-study or study of scripture and then top, tapas. Tapas is purification through heat. And that kind of means purification through difficulty or purification through pressure or purification through anything that is uncomfortable. So tapas is, uh, what are they, what's the common saying? Maybe trial by fire or something like that. I don't really know what that means, but it reminds me of tapas. So tapas on a physical level is like, when we sweat, when we do our yoga practice, when we have to do something, maybe you have to stay up a lot longer than you want to, or maybe you have to 
um, eat two Thanksgiving dinners. I know that one was funny, but if you, ha if you really feel like you had to do that, that would be tapas. Um, so anything that is, that is tough and things that we tend to not like, like confrontation or any difficult situation is tapas. And it can be mental, emotional, physical, any, it can be on any level. That's the cool thing about the yamas and niyamas is they can be on any, any idea that we have about levels of ourselves. So I was thinking, um, I was actually thinking a lot about tapas. And I was also thinking about svadhyaya. Svadhyaya these days is usually translated as self-study. And self-study is really observation. It's not self-perfection. It's not self-improvement. Self-study is supposed to have enough observation in it that you learn your own quirks and you learn your own, like some, like here's a quirk. I, this isn't true, by the way, because when I was a kid, I started really switching it up. But some people, they put on their left sock, then their right sock, then their left shoe, then their right shoe, every single time they put shoes on and they never switch it up. And we can do that without noticing it for as long as we get to put on shoes. But when we start to notice our patterns and we say, oh, this is funny, then we can start to play with them. And it isn't that there is the best combination. Some people put on both socks, then both shoes. Some people put on one sock, one shoe, other sock, other shoe. Some people trade it up. So it's like right, left, left, right. Totally doesn't matter. Um, but noticing our habits is svadhyaya. What we do after we notice them isn't even a concern. So it's not like, oh, I have to do this better. And the reason I'm talking about putting socks and shoes on is because if we talk about things like um, that have a little bit of social pressure, like how my body should look, all the whole, like anything, hair, makeup, teeth, skin, shape, height, weight, anything. There's a lot of social uh, feedback about how different bodies should be. I know that we all ignore it, but I'm just saying like, sometimes there's this want to perfect something. And is it because we're entertained by it or we can't resist? Or is it because there's some sort of pressure that we're just like, well, that'll make my life easier if I just kind of bow down to it. Anyway, Swadhyaya is thinking about all of these things. And another, like another hot topic would be income or level of wealth or um, social status or followers on Instagram. I have a lot of friends that have completely gotten off of social media because they felt like, they felt like it was messing with them. I'm really lucky that I haven't felt that way. I just think it's, I think it's, I think that, I think Facebook is like too much for me to read. So I don't, it just automatically posts onto there. But I think Instagram is just funny. Just like I think Pokemon Go is just funny. Um, anyway, and then Svadhyaya, this study of self, it's noticing our habits and then noticing what we want to do with our habits, if anything. Like when there was a roommate that I had in college, I had met her in fourth grade. We went all the way through high school. We were super close. She and I were in college and I knew that every year she gave up cursing for Lent. That was just what happened as we were growing up. And when we were in college, she talked about it because we were roommates. So then suddenly I'm living with her. Like she really didn't like the fact that she cusses. The last time I was in California, she was cussing in the kitchen, not not a string of language like, you know, my uncles would do if they were working on a truck. Like to me, she was hardly cussing. And then she would say, I shouldn't cuss. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're still totally on this. 
But when I was living with her in college, I decided I'm okay. Like it pointed out when I curse and I was like, I'm totally okay with this. Like it's part of my family. I hardly curse compared to my uncles or anyone working on a car. Um, anyway, so I really love Svadhyaya and I really love tapas. I mean, I don't. I do and I don't. So now, think. does anyone have anything right now that you want to say before I start talking about tapas? Go ahead, Rachel. Real quick, you said saucha and then tosha, santosha, svadhyaya, and tapas. Those are the, that's, that's all the niyamas? And there's one more, ishvara, I-S-H-V-A-R-A, -A, ishvara, pranidana, P-R, it's a separate word, P-R-A-N-I-D-A-N-A. That's kind of the most common spelling, Ishvara Pranidana. And you said, I thought that you said Tasha and Santosha, if I'm saying those wrong, are both contentment. Can you clarify those two real quick? Okay, so just hang on to your notes and I'll go over them again and then we'll maybe get, maybe we'll circle back. Although I don't know if I remember it already. It doesn't matter. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry to take you off your trail. No, don't be. I love, I would rather be taken off a subject than just drone on. So, saucha is purity or cleanliness. Santosha is contentment. And the thing about the contentment is that sometimes we have to be, we kind of have to, like, personally, I have to say, okay, I can be, I can be content in this moment where maybe I'm not regularly wanting to be content with it. And then other times I can just say, I'm not content with this, I'm changing it. <clears throat> and Svadhyaya is self-study or study of scripture. <clears throat> Tapas is purification through heat. And heat can be anything. It can be social pressure. It can be um, responsibility. It can be... Uh, going for a run, so purification through heat, and then Ishvara Pranidana is, it's often translated as a remembrance, but it isn't a remembrance, it's constant contact with the divine, and that's an incredibly personal um, visualization, or it's an incredibly personal feeling or idea. So constant contact with the source. And that's actually a better topic to get on from whatever I was going to talk about. So Ishvara Pranidhana, it's often translated as um, always walking with God or eyes always on God. And this divine, in, in English, we didn't have very many words for God or goddess or Shakti or Prana or Chi or <coughs> source or whatever. So it got translated as God when it turned into the English language fairly recently. And the tradition that it comes from, the tradition that yoga grows up right alongside all of the traditions, Buddhism, Jainism, Hinduism, um, God actually means that that being can either create, maintain, or destroy. So it's, an in, it's, an, it's the wrong translation. Source, Source is the closest I can find in the English language currently, or the sound of Om, Pranavam. Pranavam is the name of the sound of Om. Om is an ongoing vibration. And the scientists have recently discovered um, the ongoing vibration from the original Big Bang of the creation of our universe. And it's eight octaves lower than we can hear in the key of G. And by recently, I mean, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 years ago. 
No, I was, I was aware. So it was probably like 20 years ago they figured this out. So that ongoing vibration permeates every single thing that exists in our universe. And that is actually what Ishvara is referring to. It's referring to there is a common denominator among all things, whether they are energetic or mass, whether they are particle or wave. I don't know anything about that, but there's this, there's this kind of things exist state, and that is the state of Ishvara Pranidhana. Ishvara Pranidhana is not personalized to the point where you ask favors or you give thanks. Ishvara Pranidhana is, and it's, it's what the whole universe that we exist in and the whole planet that we exist on is built on. So it's the most common denominator of the universe. And I think that's super cool. When you read about it, it will usually say God, which isn't the best word, I don't think. That was a great explanation, Kath. I really hey, like it. So that's kind of Ishvara. And then Prani, just to break the words down for you, Prani is like prana, so it's an energy. And then Dana is an offering. So it's the common denominator of the universe, energy, and then offering. And the offering is that we are acknowledging it or we are appreciating it like i don't know what we're doing but we it, we at the very least kind of acknowledge we know about it and we have to, we we know about it on a cellular level it's just on an intellectual level it's like oh are we there and and it isn't a memory or a hope it's a now thing because yoga the meditation is all about being aware of the present moment you guys, someone did a study, not someone, but some people that I have no idea which university they were going to. They did a study on how long does a moment last? And I think they came up, I don't remember the exact number, but I think they came up with eight seconds. It was just about eight seconds. That's how long a moment is. And I was like, that's fascinating. Like you're trying to measure something that I, I don't think it was a cross-cultural measurement i think it was an american english speaking <laughs> measurement anyway it was i thought that was hilarious our language when we start getting down into these little details it's like really sanskrit and i don't know enough i'm not holding back any sanskrit knowledge like i don't have the knowledge but Sanskrit has more and more and more definitions for finer and finer and finer levels of divine energy. And we're like, uh, just call it God. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Gina, for saying that. Well, I, I've heard Ishvara Pranidhana referred to as self-surrender, and it, which I also think is probably... That's Shibari. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I think your explanation about it, it, it can be interpreted as a self-surrender, that it's this idea that you're acknowledging something that's encompassing of oneself, but transcending of oneself, and that you're, this idea that you're offering your attention to it, or your acknowledgement of it, or something like that, just makes sense. I think... I mean, I really feel like the most interesting, I, I didn't, I studied social work when I was in college, because if I was going to study psychology or anthropology, I had to take calculus, and I knew I couldn't pass calculus. So I took social work, and I had incredible, amazing professors. However, social work as a job I wasn't really in, I wasn't really into it. So um, later I was like, oh, ling linguist. I should have become a linguist. I don't even know what you call the study of it, the study of language or something. But 
linguisticness or something. Anyway, because our language is so clunky. Because if I say, you guys, if I say, relax, relax, is that a positive thing in your mind or is, the, or is that kind of an annoying thing in your mind? Because we all practice Ashtanga, I'm going to make the assumption that a lot of us think it's annoying when people tell me to relax. You get annoyed when people tell me to relax. I'm sorry. And um, it carries an inherent judgment in it. And, and the same thing, I feel the same way about surrender. When someone tells me to surrender, it makes me want to fight them. And I'm not, I've never been in a fight. But it's like, oh, you know, surrender. Surrender to yourself. And it's like, I'm already present. I don't have any surrendering to do. Fuck off. <laughs> That's funny. I don't see those two as the same. Or they don't give me those same reactions. Like, right. surrender to me is like a collapse, which I like. It's like, just, just right. pop into the mattress, you know? Because our language, we yeah. all have our own interpretation of language. I know that surrender is a super sweet word to a lot of people. So is relax. Yeah, but it doesn't work for you. I also want to be really relieved that a moment is eight seconds because that's seven seconds longer than I thought. <laughs> I can't catch the moment. <laughs> well, yeah. And then also a moment is like this short snippet of time. So there's this definition where it has a wall on one side and a wall on the other where really, if you're paying attention in the moment, it's just this awareness and time passes through it. So there are none of those snippets. There are none of those walls. So even saying we, yoga is supposed to help us stay in the moment, moment is the incorrect word. Mo moment doesn't work. Yoga is supposed to help us stay aware. Well, any measure of time doesn't really work. I mean. It makes me think of that play, Inherit the Wind, which was based on the Scope Monkey Trials. And um, in the, there's this great line in the... Uh, in I don't the, know more about that, but go ahead. <laughs> it's in the courtroom scene where it was when um, there was a teacher in Tennessee who was, this is real life, who was, um, he was, I don't know, arrested because he was teaching evolution in the schools and in his classroom, biology. And this was in the 1930s, I think. And anyway, um, his defense attorney in the trial, or at least in the play, Inherit the Wind, says to the, one of the witnesses who is on the side of the prosecution, you know, the Bible says a day, but it doesn't specify how long a day is. So could, how long is a day? And the guy says 24 hours. And he says, well, it doesn't say that in the Bible. So could a day have been Two days? Could a day have been a year? Could a day have been a million years? I mean, it's just this. Yeah. Um, so, and I remember that too. That that yeah, um, that uh, the sun wasn't created until day three or something like that. So how how do you define how long day one was? <laughs> smart. Right? It's so smart. So I had this. Okay, let's start with one day. I was a hippie. And I had already been to college and I had already like regretted a few things that I was uptight about as a teenager and also when I was bitchy to people. So I'm standing in line at this health food store because I'm a hippie and the only person who lived in a van and substituted classes when I was in middle school was Mrs. Ingersoll. And she and her two kids smelled like patchouli to the point where you could smell them halfway down a block. I am not kidding. To this day, she smells more like patchouli than anyone I have ever met anywhere. Like they wash their clothes in it or they put it in with their clothes washing over and over and over. Okay, so Mrs. Ingersoll didn't smell normal. And then she was substituting Mr. Wirt's science class and she was actually talking about evolution and Christianity and, you know, Kevin Yonser raised his hand and he's like, well, if, you know, the world was created in seven days or whatever. And she was like, 
yeah, but how long was a day? It's exactly the same thing. She said a day back in, during creation, a day could have been billions of years. And she was Christian, but she was a type of Christian that no one else had ever seen. And my town is still very Christian. And um, I just remember my mind being blown. And then later she subbed French. And I think she was originally from France. She subbed French in high school. And to get my two years, we're on a tangent, I'm sorry. To get my two years of language, I took a year of German, and then I took one semester of French, and then I took one semester, I got around it with like speech or something. Anyway, I just took the beginning of each language because I wasn't good at language. So she was substituting and whatever, we were giving her a really hard time. And then later, I saw her and I smelled her in the uh, health food store and I saw her in line and I walked up and I was like, Mrs. Ingersoll, I'm really sorry I was mean to you. And she had no idea who I was or what I was talking about at all, but I felt much better. Anyway, she introduced it to me when I was in seventh grade. And I think that that really was allowing me to think differently. Like every single teacher I had that allowed me to think new thoughts and think in new ways added to how crazy I get to be at this age. I should write them all thank you notes. Kathy, so is this is Ishvara Banadana kind of like, like if you're doing like, um, oh, I just lost it. Um, like if you're doing meditation or if you're doing like a Japa Mala and you're sort of like tapping in, right, yeah. to that. So this is truthfully what I think about Ishvara Pranidhana. You know how people are like, oh, your chakra is blocked. And I'm like, oh, then I would be dead. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, my chakra isn't blocked. <laughs> it's just not. <laughs> but I do believe there can be soot in the nadis, but I don't think, I do think that energy can like get stagnant or something, but I don't think you're going to have a chakra shut down until you leave the body. Okay, so that's kind of along the same lines. Ishvara Pranidhana I don't know if we can actually have ever had any concept of anything divine and not always be in contact with it. Like, I think Ishvara Pranidhana is almost a given. Like, your chakras are functioning perfectly. You don't have to think about it. Your intestines are functioning really well today. You don't have to give it any thought. Right. Your lungs are working really well. You don't have to give it any thought today, right? Like my kidneys, I don't even, I, don't, I never feel my kidneys. I never feel my adrenal glands sitting on top of my kidneys. I've just heard that they are named that and that they're there. Right. But I don't, I see. So I think Ishvara Pranidhana is like that. If things, if it's, if anything is going smoothly, there's a whole lot that we don't have to consider. If everything is going smoothly, we don't really need to consider things. We just keep going. So yes, that makes yes. Sense. it's when you tap okay. in, but you're tapped in 100% of the time. You always tap. Yeah, right. Okay. I like that. That made more sense for me. Thank you. And there, there's also, I love you so much. There's also like a lot of different opinions on samadhi. Like, oh, samadhi is this most amazing experience on earth and it takes you over and then your body's on earth, but you're in, you know, you're in, you're in with the divine and like, those are cool experiences. They're super cool. That's great. But why are we naming everything Samadhi? Because people don't agree on what it is. So the Samadhi I like is if you're alive to me, if you're alive, you're in Samadhi. And if your samadhi happens to include things that aren't comfortable, you know, keep going. Like, we're all going to keep going. There's, there's also, uh, there's also like, the, there's all these different maps. And I, I appreciate them so much. And then when we get into the intricate details, it's like, why is this part of the land? Why is this puddle of water called Lake Champlain? Why is that? 
why is that puddle of water like we just like to name things yeah if you look at the um constellations and you start looking up different cultures constellations and overlay them it's like all different languages overlaid on the star systems you know that's kind of cool and all of the different um creation ideas anyway i like it all anybody else have any questions or comments maybe we're done with questions go ahead no i'm not done with questions go for it rachel what's santosha santosha is contentment it's a peace of mind or it's also it's peace it's contentment and peace and it can again be on any level so the body should feel peaceful the body should feel content and then tosha oh um santosha um i can i'll break that word down and i'll get back to you i don't know it off the top of my head i can but, make guesses but i really don't i really don't have that broken down oh okay. wait. I thought the Nikamas were Saucha, Tosha, San, Tosha. Oh, okay. Well, oh, okay. So it's Saucha, Santosha. There you go. Swadhyaya, Tapas, Ishvara, Pranidhana. Good. Okay. Um, I don't care if your speaker is on or off. Repeat after me. Yamas. Niyamas. Niyamas. Asana. Asana. Pranayama. Pranayama. Pratyahara. Pratyahara. Um, Pratyahara. Dahrana. Dahrana. Dahyana. Dahyana. Samadhi. Samadhi. And the yamas are ahimsa. Ahimsa. Satya. Uh, hold on, ahimsa, satya, asteya, asteya, aparigraha, aparigraha, brahmacharya, brahmacharya, and the niyamas are saucha, saucha, santosha, santosha, swadhyaya, swadhyaya, tapas, tapas, ishvara pranidhana, ishvara pranidhana. There we go. Okay, uh, sometime we have to talk about the yugas because when I tell you things that sound like Disneyland, just realize that <laughs> they only sound like Disneyland because of the time that we're living in. So sometime we'll talk about the yugas, but right now I do want to tell you one Disneyland thing. Uh, let's see if I can remember it. Yamas, Niyamas, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara. Oh, I remember it. Okay, so there's also an idea that if you speak a word perfectly or if you use it as mantra and it embodies you then that is the vibration that is given off so just by saying the eight limbs and the yamas and the niyamas then they're all set and they're all over you you're good to go right there's people who have so much peace on them, so much nonviolence, ahimsa, that uh, they can walk in. They can walk into a war zone, and no one around them will fight because they because it can't happen in their presence. They embody ahimsa to the point where anywhere they are, nothing bad happens around them. Well, nothing contentious. That's a good story. Uh, I think it was Swami Satchidananda. That story. Yeah. Imagine the world would be a better place, huh? Yeah. How, how would you cultivate that characteristic? Well, you know, Just... I thought I'd been working on it, but sometimes there's a little bit of a war around me, so I don't think I'm very good at it. I'm not sure I'm the one to ask. Um, reading, 
reading things that are peaceful, meditating, mm. doing, you're already there. The reason that we aren't there a hundred percent is because it's, uh, it's like one in the morning right now. You know, it's a little bit, there's a little bit of darkness hanging out, but it's just the time that we're in. But I think you're already cultivating it. Actually, maybe you can come back and tell me your ideas about cultivating it. If you need to think about it, or do you already know? No, I don't. Yeah, think about it and tell me. Okay. <laughs> you guys, let's all do that. Let's all think about how do we cultivate ahimsa to the point where you could walk up to two people fighting and they would stop. Mm. Not because you're better at Kung Fu than they are, but because your aura just, I don't know if aura is a good word, but your presence just, you know, they just stop. Remember that story that I like to read about the cook, crooked staff, Basista and Vishwamitra, Vishwamitra comes up, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh my gosh, look at this place of peace. Everybody's meditating. All of the animals are calm. The animals aren't eating each other. Remember that story? Yeah. That whole ashram area, that whole hermitage is bathed in ahimsa. Okay, so now we have a pro we have a homework to contemplate ahimsa, and then also I'll have to read that story and talk about the yugas. We have a lot to do. <laughs> All right. Um, I love you. Thank you for coming. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for talking. Thank you for loving Jackson. Um, tomorrow, 9 a.m. is primary, and then 10 is long form pranayama. Hi, Sarah. And tomorrow and evening, our, our watch party is a talk by the woman I, in the newsletter. We talked about the book, the, the Human Cosmos, where she talks about how awe makes us nicer human beings, how experiencing awe makes us nicer human beings. So we're watching that Sunday at six. Ooh, that sounds good. Tied into this conversation. Totally. You know, um, Svenja went to Hawaii to study awe. So oh, maybe, really? Yes, that's why she went originally was to study awe. Oh, cool. So I'll mention it to her. It, it didn't end up happening, but it was a good plan. It was yeah. a great plan. I think she's now studying her own awe, which is probably a little bit easier. <laughs> I do. Okay, I love you. Thank you. Have Namaste. A good day. Bye. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Maureen. Love you. Thank you, Bill. Bye. I love you. I love you. I love you. Love you, Kathy. Yeah. I love you. Bye.